Hi everybody, welcome to the Jakarta Shorts Sew Along. And this pattern is by Sinclair Patterns and it is a PDF pattern. Now I have made two different versions of these shorts. The first one using a chambray, which was fe featured in one of my recent videos. And then in, for the sew along in this video, I used just a really nice quilting cotton. So I think that this pattern is great because it has a lot of different techniques, maybe some techniques that you haven't done before, or you want more practice with. So that is why I picked it for a sew along. So let's talk a little bit about the pattern. The pattern comes in two different lengths, a short version and then a Bermuda length version. With the short version, you can roll the hem, you can add a tab, you don't have to have a tab, you can just leave it long. I mean, you can do mix and match with what's available. You can have a faux fly, not a faux fly. You can add the pockets. You don't have to add the pockets. So it's really great and you could create your own version, whatever that may be. So for both of my shorts, the one I made previously with the motorcycle print chambray, and then for today's version, we are sewing up view A because it incorporates all of the techniques into one pair of shorts. So if you want to go and make different views like view B or view C, or you want to omit different techniques, you can, but at least with this version, you will get all of the techniques in this video, which I will timestamp below. So if you're only looking for help on a particular technique, even if you are not sewing the Jakarta pants, or I'm sorry, shorts, you can still maybe find this video helpful. So view A is described as shorts with a faux fly patch pockets in the short length with the rolled hem and side tabs. For this version for the sew along, I chose to use just some premium quilting cotton that I had and then the yoga waistband, which is another great technique. I've really grown to like the yoga waistband and the reason being is because when you have a casing with a waistband, you get gathering up at the top where the waistband is and not just at the bottom. But with the yoga waistband, your waistband remains smooth and all of the wrinkles are at the bottom. They're, um, they're not in the waistband, they're in the pants or the skirt or whatever it is. And I quite like that. So yes, the yoga waistband is definitely part of this sew along. So I will say that I followed the directions according to Sinclair pretty much, I'd say about 90%. There was um, maybe even 95. There's a couple little instances where I kind of veered off on my own, not too badly. Uh, and I'll mention that in the video as we go. And then also I just want to talk about the alterations that I made for my pattern. Now I do grade out um, to the hips. So my waist is smaller and I grade out at the hips but you don't need to worry about that. And I did add length, and I added length to the hem. I added an extra inch just because I wanted my shorts longer, the fit on me, they were a little bit too short. And then I added an extra half inch just for the hem allowance, and I'll explain that later as we get to it, but it will not affect the technique or how you will make your shorts. So, without so the only other thing I want to say is that this pattern is meant for woven fabric. However, you can use a knit if it's a stable knit, but you will just need to size one or two sizes down. Um, and I do recommend making a mock-up if you can. I know a lot of us don't like to make mock-ups because you just want to get right into the project. But I did do a mock-up when I first made this pattern. Now I was a pattern tester for this pattern. So the first version I made with the little motorcycles, that was the test version and it came out very well. And I'll always say, and this is, it's always true that the directions in Sinclair patterns are so clear and there's advice on how to fit the, the shorts to your body and any adjustments like crotch adjustments or things you might need. There's some helpful advice in there. But when you're picking your pattern size, the main thing is you want to pick your base pattern size on your hip measurement. 
So that's the widest part. So just remember that. But again, the instructions included in the pattern are super helpful. But if you have any questions, please do reach out to me and I will try to help you if I can. So let's get into the sew along. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the materials I'm using. So I have this quilting cotton that I've had in my stash for quite a while. And I don't typically sew clothes using quilting cotton. Doesn't mean you can't. I thought, well, this is going to make a really cute pair of shorts. So I'm cutting my front and my back out of this fun print and it's 100% cotton. And then I found this black stretch cotton, um, nothing fancy. And I thought I would go ahead and accent the shorts with the black. And for the yoga waistband, we have just black double brushed poly, which I really love on yoga waistbands because it's incredibly soft. Of course, you're going to need um, a cutting tool to cut your material out. And I really love my Kai rotary cutter. And then I've got my favorite pins and I'm using the Schmetz Universal 8012 needle. And then I'm going to be top stitching everything and sewing with this thread um, that does pull the sort of rust color that's in this print. Um, so this is Gooderman thread, which I really like. And then for the buttons on the tabs of the shorts, I have these um, three quarter of an inch. They look like they're wood and they have this really cute um, motif or design. Hopefully you can see that. So that's what I'm going to be working with. And how could I forget the elastic? So here I have mine. Mine is only an inch um, in width, but the, the pattern calls for one and three eighths to two inches. Honestly, um, I used one inch on my sunset pants, which has the same kind of waistband, and I think it's fine. But if you want to follow the patterns, it's you probably do one and a quarter to two inches. Um, and you want this soft knitted elastic not the really you know that rigid elastic because that's not going to be really comfortable this one is actually a little bit more rigid than the one i used for my sunset lounge pants but i think it will work fine because it's not too rigid so you're going to cut this the size of your waist so let's take a look at the pieces we will need we have piece one which is the back and you will cut two of these mirrored. And for this, for the back and the front, I am using the printed fabric. And then we're gonna have piece two, which is the front. And again, you're gonna cut two mirrored. Next, we have the front patch pocket and you will cut two mirrored. And for me, I'm going to be cutting this out of my black fabric. And I'll just take a moment to point out the little dots. Let's see, I don't know if you can see them, but they're little circles. They're little circles on the pattern and they're not meant for you to actually mark. They just indicate seam allowance. So for the most part, I just disregard them. Here we have piece four, which is the front patch pocket facing and you will cut two mirrored and I'm using the printed fabric for my facing. Next, we have the back patch pocket and you will cut two of these mirrored and I'm cutting this out of black. And you'll see mine has some cuts through on the top stitch markings and I'll show you why later. And this is piece six, it's the waistband and you're gonna cut it on a fold right here. And this is going to be cut using your knit fabric and I'm cutting mine out of the black double brushed poly. Piece eight is the template for the backpack, back patch pockets. Um, it's a template so you know how to iron, but you don't actually have to use this. It might make your life easier and um, I'll show you that later when we get to that. And then here we have piece seven, which is the tab. And you're going to need to cut four 
and I am cutting mine out of the black fabric. So the first thing we're going to do now is prepare the front patch pockets and I have completed one of them already and you can see this is the front and it's top stitched. Let's zoom in here. You can see a little bit. Now normally when you top stitch you want your stitch length to be a little bit longer than your usual two and a half. Um, I forgot to switch my stitch length to three and that's okay we're just going to go with it so um, if you want switch your stitch length to three or four millimeters somewhere between there if you want um, for the top stitching but you can do whatever you want really so here on the back this is what it looks like the raw edge is sandwiched in and top stitched so that's what the inside of the pocket looks like so let's take a look here. So we have, here's the pocket piece. This is right side up. You have your pocket facing. This is now right side down and you're going to put it along, you're gonna pin it along that slanted edge, right sides together. Let's get my pins. And yes, it does go a little bit longer, so don't worry about that. What we're going to do is stitch them together 5 8 of an inch from the raw edge all the way down and make sure that you run off the bottom fabric. So just, you can keep going if you want, but make sure you do that. And then we will do our top stitching. Okay, we're over here at the ironing board. Whoops. And you can see that I have stitched these together, right sides together. And what we're first going to do is to trim this seam down. Um, just go ahead and cut like right in the middle between the stitch line and your raw edge. That will be fine. Now we should press because you want it to look nice and pressing makes everything nice. So just fold it out, give it a good press, maybe a little bit of steam. Okay. Whoop. Looks like that. Okay. Then you're going to want to fold that raw edge in five eighths of an inch and the best way and this is how I do all my pressing with folds and hems is this lovely heat ruler so I'm just going to fold it up to the five eighths of an inch mark and press as I go it's just makes life easy if you don't have anything like this just go ahead and draw a line to help you know where to fold or something like that Get one I'm saying. Okay. So now we have, sorry the camera moves because we've got it mounted to the ironing board. So you see how we have it pressed under. What we're going to do is now fold this to the inside. And one thing that you can do, you can either fold the facing to the inside so you don't see any of the facing or if you want if you have a little bit of contrast you can roll it out ever so slightly or honestly as much as you want i have mine just peeking out a little bit so i'm just going to roll it so it's peeking out a little bit but again you don't have to do that you can make sure that none is peeking out if you want and press it into place. Hopefully you can see that. So the way I'm going to do the top stitching, now there are three rows of top stitching, and you'll start with the first one being right along the edge of the fold, 
And how I'm doing this is you see this guide, this edge of the plate, or you can even use the inside of your foot right there. So I'm gonna try to start a little bit. Um, it's one-handed, so forgive me, but like that. Just matching my folded edge along that edge. And I'm gonna stitch the first row all the way down Here's my first completed row. And as a reminder, I kept my two and a half uh, millimeter stitch length, but when you are top stitching, you usually go longer, somewhere between three and four. So just remember, if you do wanna lengthen yours, remember that part. Um, okay, so the next line, I'm going to do a quarter inch away from the first line. And that's going to be done kind of easily because I'm just gonna use the edge of the foot over there on the right side along the first line of stitching. And just go all the way down so that your foot edge here is aligned with the first row of stitching. And then for the third row, we're going to do the same so that this is aligned with the second row of stitching. So now I've got the second row in, I'm completing the third row in the same manner, right along the edge. All right, here's the second pocket done. You'll see that there's this excess and you can, you can trim it off just right along the edge of the other fabric. That's fine. Before we sew the patch pockets on, we first need to fold in these raw edges. And again, I'm using my trusty ruler because, like I said, lifesaver. So you have, if you're looking at your pocket right side up, you're going to fold this edge, which is across from your opening and the bottom. You don't need to fold this under, which is um, the waist, because it will be stitched so I'm going to go ahead and flip my pocket over and I'll start with the bottom. It doesn't really matter with what edge you start with and I'm just going to fold it up to the 5 8 of an inch line and press. So sorry of the wobbles again. We will fix that. Okay. That is five eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna go and fold the other side. You can just leave that folded. You're gonna beat the five eighths and press. Don't burn yourself. So now I'm gonna flip it over and you can see I've got these nice pressed edges. Make sure that this guy's not flapping out this little corner. Um, so that's why I take a nice second press on top. Use a pressing cloth if you need to, depending on your fabric. And we're gonna pin it on to our pant. So taking a look at the pant with the pocket pinned, I just want to explain a couple of things. So the pocket is pinned with the top stitching towards the side seam. So here's the side seam where the hip curve is, and then you have your fly and your crotch seam there. So there are no markings or notches or anything like that that you need to bother with to line up this pocket. It's pretty easy. You're just gonna make sure that the raw edge of your pocket and the raw edge of your pant line up and also down here, they line up. So once you get that into position, you can go ahead and pin it. And then the next thing, oh, I just make sure everything's smooth. There's no folds or anything. And the next thing that I do is I stitch an eighth of an inch up and then I pivot and I go down the side and I pivot and then I go along the bottom and pivot and then I stop up here. Um, and 
that is your first line of top stitching. Though technically the line up here isn't top stitching, it's just so that I kind of secure it. And then you do the second line of top stitching with the same method we used over here where your presser foot is aligned with the first row of stitching. And I'll just show you again at the machine. And you don't have to do three rows like you do over here. You just do the first one at about an eighth and then the second one a quarter of an inch away from the first. So as you can see, I am aligning my fabric with that edge of the plate or along this edge of the foot, the inside edge of the foot. And I'm gonna go all the way around at my first pass, come back and do a second row using um, this edge of this foot as the guide against the first row of stitching. And just a note on pivoting, um, so when you get to the end where you wanna stop and move your fabric, you just raise your presser foot, you make sure that that needle is still in the fabric, and then you move your fabric around and you continue your stitch. But you might find that sometimes you go just a stitch too far. So just use your wheel and you can go backwards a stitch and then you can continue if that makes sense. So let's say, let's pull this up again. Let's say I get to the edge and I say, oh no, I went a little bit too far. I take my hand wheel, that over there, and I just roll it back and I walk back one stitch, okay? And then I can pivot if I need to. Okay, so when I told you you had to actually go and stitch this part, you don't have to. Um, I'm just gonna do it just to reinforce it. Um, but when you do your double stitch, and you go and you do your second line, don't bother. You're just gonna do your double line along this line, pivot, and then go across. Don't worry about doing a double over here. And there you go, hot off the machine. Just two rows down here. So the next thing we need to do is prepare the patch pockets for the back. And as you can see, I have already marked mine. Um, the easiest way, honestly, is to get some transfer paper, this wax transfer paper, such as this. So get your pocket pattern piece and lay it on top and then make your marks by pressing hard. Now it is kind of difficult to see, you know, where your pieces are. You could kind of go like that and line it up that way. Um, but if you don't have a tracing wheel or this transfer paper, work, which works really well, you can get it in different colors like white, blue, red, yellow, multi-packs, thing like that. But what I did, um, just wanted to try a different method is I went and got my X-Acto knife and very carefully cut along the line that I needed to for my size all the way. And then I got this white pencil, which I love this particular white pencil. And I went and I drew in my lines through those cut marks, which I found worked really well for me. Um, and then you can make sure that they're accurate after you've drawn them in. I believe this measures um, between the lines, it's three quarters of an inch. So that is what I did to mark my top stitching lines. And you really wanna make sure that these are accurate because they will show. Unless you have a busy print, then it won't show up so much. But in my case, this is a solid color and they're gonna show. So then once you've got them marked, you're just gonna go ahead and take it to your sewing machine and top stitch using these lines as a guide. And again, as a reminder, if you're wanting to increase the length of your top stitch, don't forget to do that. As you're stitching, you see this line here in the middle of the presser foot? As you stitch, you're going to align that right along your your drawn in line and that's going to ensure that your stitch line is on the line that you drew. So let me show you 
one-handed sewer. See that? Just going right along that line, making sure that everything is nice and smooth and nothing bunches up. All right, so I have my top stitched pockets and I've wiped mostly the lead pencil off. Um, so yeah, make sure that when you do choose your fabric marker or whatever that is, that it does actually, it can be removed from your fabric because sometimes they actually don't and that is not fun. So just that. So um, what you're supposed to do is use this template, which you should cut it out of something that you can iron over. Um, I actually use a manila folder sometimes for these, but I actually didn't use this template for my patch pockets because I realized that what it wants you to do is basically fold all of these edges with the exception of the top a half inch in. So you could just do that. So I'm not at my ironing station, but what you could do is fold it over an inch on each side like so, and the bottom, and press that into place. Or if you don't have a ruler, you can draw in, like I have done here, which you might not be able to see. That helps, okay. If you draw in an inch line from the sides and you fold it up to that line, that means you're folding it at a half inch. So you could do that. And then the top is actually folded a half inch and then another half inch so that the raw edge is totally protected and inside. Okay, so these sides, these are all just half inch and the top is a half inch and another half inch. So go ahead and press your edges to the inside whatever method works for you. And then we can go ahead and stitch them on to the back. Here I have a finished, um, nicely pressed pocket, and this is the back side of the pocket. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you know you should fold over the top edge last. That way there are no raw edges peeking out. And then we're going to take it to the machine and do our usual top stitch right on the top of the pocket. So you're going to do that edge that's like, I keep saying it's an eighth, it's more like a sixteenth. And then you're going to do a second row on the top, a quarter inch from the first row, and then you do it on both pockets. And then we can go ahead and stitch them down to the pant, or the short piece, I should say. So the next thing we're going to need to do is to actually mark where the pocket goes on the back. And we're gonna do it kind of the same way that we did the markings for the top stitching on the back pockets. Um, just take your pattern piece, lay it on top of your fabric, and then you can see here that you just mark the line. So you can either do, you know, how I did it, which was use the X-Acto knife and make the line and then trace in there, or use um, transfer paper, whatever your method is, go ahead and do that. So I have a white line here from when I traced it. And then I have my pocket top stitched, all of the raw edges pressed under. And all you're gonna do is just line it up along that line, like so. Pin it into place and then we're gonna go stitch it down to the, p the back. And as you can imagine, it's gonna be the same situation. We're going to do the, our little edge stitching, and then we're going to do another line all the way, um, well, a quarter inch from that first line. So you're just gonna go start here at the top, go down, pivot, go down to the bottom, pivot, go to this side, pivot, and go back up. And then you're going to do that a second time, a quarter inch away from the first line, just like we have been doing this whole time.
Back here at the machine, and I am doing the first row of top stitching on the pocket, but I wanted to just make sure that you're paying attention to these corners and that you don't have anything sticking out. So make sure they're just nice, nicely tucked so you don't have any bits sticking out um, on both sides. So I've just finished top stitching my pocket on to the back side of my short. And you will probably see here that I have a bar tack and we're going to do the other side, but I wanted to first explain that. Now you, you might notice that this line of this um, curve here, if you're looking at the tutorial on hers, it looks much closer to this line. Not sure exactly why mine is a bit far apart, but that's, that's fine, it is what it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is bar tack. So I've basically tacked along these two top stitching lines, just a little bit past that line over here and then just barely off of the pocket fold here. And how you do that is you set your machine to a zigzag stitch using a width I used two and a half for my width, two and a half millimeters for my width, and the length of the stitch, I used only 0.5, and that's how you get those tight little zigzags. So I started here, just beyond this stitch line, and I went all the way down, just off of the pocket, and then I went backwards. And I used this line as a guide, so I placed my presser foot right on top of that. And I'll go to the machine and show you the placement because this might be a little bit tricky or confusing if you haven't done it before. Okay, let's get this into position. So I want, on this side, I'm gonna start basically just off of the fabric of the pocket from going this way on this side. So I can see in that hole that I'm just barely off of the pocket, which is what I want. And I'm going to line up my presser foot, that line here, to be on top of this top stitched line. So let's try to do this one-handed. And it kind of goes slow. Okay, so right if I get maybe a couple of stitches, well, maybe a few, maybe four. Let's see what I did on the other one. Looks like I have about four stitches. Then I'm going to go backwards. Right on top of what I already did. I just tried to do that one-handed and film, so who knows what this is gonna look like. And there you have it, my second bar tack. Now it got a little wonky because I started going off the beaten path because I was trying to hold my phone and film, which isn't a great idea. So I might take those stitches out and go on top of it just to make it more even, but this is what you're going for, this one right here. Okay, so next we need to mark our seam that's here on the front crotch. And let me grab my pattern piece here. So I am marking this piece and this side because I'm going to be sewing this way on my machine. So when I put the two pieces together, right sides together, I'll put it in my machine and search this way. That's why I'm marking this side. Anyway, so what you'll do is you'll just mark whichever way you want. In this case, I did transfer paper and then went over it with my trusty white lead pencil. And you're just gonna trace this line all the way down. And you'll notice that this stops five eighths of an inch away from the seam allowance because when you sew up this inseam, it should catch. So. Just thought I'd point that out, that it ends about 5 eighths of an inch away. 
So, it's all you need to do is just do a regular stitch from the top all the way to the end. So you wanna make sure that you've got both of your pieces, as I said, right sides together. Okay, so we've got this piece. And there you go. Pin them together, all nice and neat, of course. So here we have my stitched up shorts with the fly. And I finished my um, seam over here. And it is tricky to get around this bit, I won't lie. But I forgot that before you actually finish either with uh, your pinking shears or your overcast stitch or your serger, you need to, right here under the fly, right in there, you're going to clip it almost to the seam allowance. Whoops. Like so. Actually, it's probably good to pink that area so that it doesn't fray. And, um... Yeah, so you're supposed to do that. It prevents, like, I guess there's this sort of weird fold or something goes on over <laughs> down there if you don't clip it. So that's why you do it. Just make sure you don't clip through that line of stitching. In fact, you may just want to go ahead and do another line of stitching on top of this one just to reinforce it. And a lot of times when you're making pants, you do that anyway since the crotch area gets a lot of wear and tension sometimes. Next, we're going to press the fly to the left of the pant when you are looking at it this way. Good press. So now we've got the fly pressed to the left here. What you'll want, you'll want to do is just pin it into place so it doesn't flop about or anything like that. But you're gonna flip it over and you'll feel that it's on this side, the fly is on this side. Looks like there's a little bit of a, when I pinned it, it got a little bit of a, it's not that smooth. So, just like that. So you're going to need to mark your top stitching line about, it says an inch and a quarter away from the center front seam. So what we should do is get a clear ruler and I'm going to use my trusty white lead pencils. So I'm just going to can also feel that. So what I'm doing is just drawing along the edge of the fly. I could feel it from underneath. That's what I'm doing because it's just easier for me. And I want my stitches to be even. So we're supposed to have the first line about an inch and a quarter away from the center. Alrighty, so I'll just mark that. And that ends up being approximately three-eighths of an inch from the line of the the fly itself. So that's what I'm going to use as my guide. It just, for me, it's easier. But you do whatever way you want. So let's zoom that in. So to recap, I first went ahead and sketched out feeling the bump and the ridge from the fly underneath where that ended. And then the instructions say to stitch one and a quarter inch from the center front seam. So I marked off where that would be with my ruler. It's right here. And then I measured and I realized, I found out that is three eighths of an inch in from 
where my fly ends basically. So I went ahead and drew that line in. And now I'm just gonna top stitch that. And then once I do the first line, I'm gonna go back in and looks like, yes. So then after I stitch the first line, you got it. You're going to do another line a quarter inch to the left from your first line. All right, and here we've got the top stitching done. And then once that's done, you can add, um, per the instructions, a decorative um, bar tack. And I've added one here. And then they also have one... She's got one up a little bit just past this curve, but I decided just to add this one right here. Of course, these are optional, so you, you really don't have to, but I thought it would be cute. Okay, now that we've got the front crotch situated, we're gonna take our back pieces and you're going to lay them right sides together, like so, on top of each other. And we are going to stitch. We're going to pin them, of course, first and then stitch. But I want to show you, we're going to start up here, go all the way down and around and end here. And we're going to stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then once you're done with that, you can finish the seam either by serging or pinking or overcast on your regular sewing machine. So next, we've got our front and our back, which needs to be sewn together at the side seams. So here's my front and we're going to lay the back on top and then we're just going to pin together at the side seams here and then we're going to stitch each side seam I keep hitting this so we'll stitch So I've got one side pinned up and we're just going to stitch all the way down 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both sides and then you will finish your seam however you like. So now we kind of have a pair of shorts in a way. We have the side seams and the crotch all sewn up but we still need the inseam sewn because it's right now it's more like a skirt so turn it inside out so that the right sides are together and you'll see here that we have this to deal with we have to close that up so how do we do that well you've got your so we kind of see you have a leg here so we're gonna have to close that up to make the leg. So if we pin that, do this quickly so you can see. And then you've got your crotch seams. So you wanna pin that so that those seams match. That's important. That makes your work all the much nicer when your seams match. And then you've got your other leg over here, so you're gonna pin that, just to demonstrate. So if you look now, what you have is you're going to start at the end of well, the opening, well, the opening of one leg, go all the way to the crotch seam and go to the other leg. And that's 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you're gonna finish off your seam. Okay, we have our lovely shorts here almost done. 
All of the inseam, side seams, crotch seams are all sewn up. So now what we need to do is worry about the waistband. And the first thing we do with that is take your knit waistband here and make sure that it is folded like so. Wrong sides together, or I'm sorry, right sides together. It's hard for me to see what's right and wrong here. It's black, so it's really not gonna matter for me, but make sure that you are folded right sides together, and then you're gonna go over here, the opening, and stitch five eighths of an five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can use a straight stitch for that, it's okay. Um, if you want to use a zigzag too, that's fine, but the instructions do say to use a straight stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead, head over to the machine and do that, and do make sure that your notches, because there are notches on this, are lined up, just to make sure that everything's nice and even. Okay, so I have folded the elastic in half. I've got the raw edges together and I've got a zigzag stitch and the length is two, the width is two, and I'm just gonna sew five eighths an inch seam and I'm gonna go back and forth a couple of times to really make sure it's secure. So I've got our elastic stitched. Now we need to mark it into quarters. So here is the seam. And if I fold it here on the seam, like so, then I'm gonna get this other side, I'm gonna mark that so I can tell. Then, if you match up the seam with the mark that I just made, that you just made, then you're gonna get this side and you can mark that as the other quarter and same with the other side. So match your seam and your middle marking and there you go. So now you've got your elastic all nice and marked up. So once we've got the elastic sewn up, we need to attach it to the waistband. So here is the waistband wrong side out. What we are going to do is to match up these notches, essentially, like that, okay? So then you'll note that there's some notches on the sides here. So that's gonna help guide us with what we're gonna do with our elastic because we wanna make sure the elastic is stretched out evenly. So I have my elastic and the seam is also facing up just like it is on this lovely waistband. So I'm gonna pin it so that the seams match. It's a little tough here. And then, remember we have this quarter marking on our elastic kind of easier to pull the waistband through the loop of the elastic and pin it that way. So I'm gonna take this um, mark that we made, the quarter mark, and match it to that notch here. So I'm kind of skipping so here's the seam, there's a notch. Whoa, <laughs> sorry about that. And then I have my pin and my quarter mark. So I'm gonna come around and there's gonna be another notch and then there's gonna be another notch. So you'll see we have a mark and we kind of want that, we do, we want that mark we made on our elastic to be pretty much in the middle of those two notches. It will make it even. So I'll pin that there. And then we're gonna come around. And here, so we have that notch that we were just referencing. And then we're gonna have a notch, and then we're gonna have another notch. So the notch right here, it's in the middle. 
we're going to match it up with one of our markings that we made. Now you may have to pull, it depends on the size of your elastic, but that's how it's going to go. So you've got your center back seam with your elastic and your waistband, you have a notch. Then you have a notch and you have a quarter marking on your elastic. Then you have a notch. And then you have another notch, but in the middle you have a quarter marking. And then you have a notch and a quarter marking, a notch, and then you're back to your center back seam. So we are going to go stitch this on the machine and as we do, we're probably gonna have to pull a little bit, or you might have to pull more, or you might not have to pull at all. It just depends on the size of your elastic. But we wanna make sure that when we are sewing, it's nice and smooth as we sew and it's not bunched. So I'm going to actually demonstrate that for you on the sewing machine. Okay, so we are here at the sewing machine. We got a change it to a zigzag um width three length three is fine well at least that's what it said and the instructions so that's what we're going to go with so here we are i'm going to we don't need to take this off um, a lot of times it's easier when you have something circular to remove your table and just use the arm but so I'm gonna start really start anywhere I guess and it's five eighths of an inch seam allowance okay so the easiest thing to do is see I've got my um, elastic here and I'm just kind of as I go make sure that everything is nice and smooth and if I have to pull a little bit the elastic then I will. Should be raw edge to raw edge. And I tend to hold where I pinned because it helps me make sure that everything is even. And I'm finding that I'm not needing to really pull really at all. But if you have to, that's normal. Yes, I just sewed over a pen. Back. That's it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is fold the waistband wrong sides together. Make sure that your um, seams are aligned and so are your notches. So now we're ready to attach the waistband. And you're gonna, so take your waistband and the stitching is going to be exposed. So the non-stitching side will be matched to the right side of your shorts. So the seam on the waistband is going to be lined up with the left side seam of the shorts. So I think the easiest way, at least for me, is to kind of put it inside, if you will, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just go around and first pin up the side seam and the seam on the waistband. 
And when you do this, make sure that you grab all of the layers. So you're gonna have two layers of fabric on the waistband, you're gonna have the elastic, and then you're going to have the pant fabric. And you're just gonna go around and match up the notches. The notches that are on your waistband with the notches that you've made on your pants. And we're not gonna be stretching at this point. We're simply, um, well, you might have to do a little stretching at this point depending on the size of your waistband and the size of your pants. But what I'm doing right now is I'm not worrying about making sure the entire pant fits. I'm just worried about matching up the notches. And then I'll go back and stretch out the waistband and pin so that it fits. So here's an example of how much you might have to stretch to get the waistband and the shorts to match. So you can see here, here's a notch, here's my side seam. I really have to pull quite a bit so that all of these layers match. It's actually a lot of pulling, and when you go to the machine, I'm not gonna lie, it's not really fun. <laughs> okay, so I have all of my notches matched up and pinned at those points only. So what you can do now is you could either just take it to the sewing machine and start stitching between these points and stretching between these points as you go, or you can go ahead and stretch it out and pin it into place. It's really up to you and what you're comfortable with. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and stitch this on. Okay, so here I'm at the machine and I, I have my, um, my table and removed so you can see the free arm only. Now you can actually leave the table on because this isn't a tight um, circular space, but I've already got my free arm off, so that's why it's like this. Um, you can start anywhere you want and the instructions say to use a straight stitch and so out of 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. But because there is so much stretching that will need to be done, I'm not going to use a straight stitch. I'm going to use a zigzag at a width of one and my length is two and a half. That is a personal preference and uh, you know you do what you want. So as you do this you're going to want to make sure that everything is matching, that all of your layers are nice and even and together and nothing is slipping. So take your time. You really don't want to rush this as annoying as it is. Sorry but... So you see I'm pulling <laughs> as I stitch because I have to get these lengths to meet and I pull, I have my right hand positioned where the next notch point is. So you might see that I have a, an extra notch cut here. Just in case you notice that, that was an error. So disregard that, that is not the correct notch and I don't want you to get confused. So I'm just gonna start stitching ever so sort of slowly and pulling and making sure that all of my layers are matching as I go and nothing is slipping down and not getting caught. It's a pain in the butt. You just kind of slowly work your way all the way around the waist. And some parts are going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot more room between the bits, so it might be a little bit trickier for you. Like the whole back, there's a lot to pull here. And I know, I kind of have a feel for how much I need to pull. I need to pull a lot, so... On those longer sections, I just pull pretty much as hard as I can. And if you're pulling this way, a lot of times you're going to find you're going to need to kind of guide your fabric because you've got resistance. So, let's see, kind of two-handed deal. I have finished sewing and 
Once I finished completed the circle, I back tack. I can take the pins out now. Um, okay, so I will say though, with this at this step, you can if you want um, just straight off the bat surge it. I don't do that. I never just first surge. That's just my preference. If you do, you'll want to disengage the blade on your serger. Just FYI. And then once you've finished stitching, you'll see here that you've got your waistband on. And yes, it's going to be quite puckery and really gathered, but that, don't fret, is totally normal. And when you put it on, those gathers will stretch out and it will be more flat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to my serger and serge off this seam. And then we're going to be on to hemming the shorts. Before we go and start the hem of the pants or the shorts, um, I want to just tell you that top stitching this is optional. And I think I'm going to do that because it does help keep the bottom and the bottom of the elastic waistband tucked under and um, below the waistline. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my presser foot and there is a groove to that line and I'm going to just line it up with the waistline itself. If you have an edge stitch foot, that's even better. I like to use my edge stitch foot for this, but not everyone has that, so I'm just gonna do it this way. Let's see if I could zoom in. And then I'm going to move my needle over, I think three places. And I am gonna zigzag this. I'm gonna zigzag it at 0.5, stitch length, two and a half. And I am going to kind of stretch as I go so that it's smooth and I'm not um, stitching down tiny pleats or gathers because we don't really want that. But just guiding that middle groove of the presser foot right along the seam. And you can use this, your right hand, to constantly be feeling to make sure that the, the seam allowance is pressed under going that way towards the bottom of the pant and also using that hand to kind of pull taut the pant. So now it's time to press the hem and I have my shorts turned inside out and this is the right leg and I'm using my little um, pressing board because it just makes life easier a little bit. And then this is definitely something, this thing again. So the instructions for the pattern want you to have a one inch hem allowance. So really, ideally what you would do is turn it under a half inch and then again a half inch. But you will do that for your pattern, but for me, I just want you to know that I personally prefer with for the rolled shorts to have a full turned under hem of um, one inch showing, and you'll see what I mean. I'll pop in a picture. Um, you can see that for the rolled hem, half of it is the actual him, but I want the entire one inch to be, it's kind of hard to explain. So basically, I have added length to my pattern so that I have 1.5 inch hem allowance total. You will have one inch. I'm going to turn up mine a half inch, just like you are at first. And then when you turn yours up a second time, 
a half inch. I'm turning up mine a full inch. And I'm going to put pictures in because I'm, for some reason, cannot articulate what I, I mean. And pictures will definitely help. Um, so basically what I did is I added another half inch to my hem allowance on this pattern. Just because I like the way it looks better with the rolled hem shorts. So... I'm going to do this a half inch all the way around and then once you're done doing your half inch you're going to come back and do another half inch all the way around but what I'm going to do is a full inch because I've just allowed myself. Once you have your hems all pressed you're just going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch up your hem. For me, I am stitching my hem at 7 eighths of an inch away from the folded edge and you will stitch yours away, I believe it's 3 eighths of an inch. Since you've folded it up a half inch, you'll want to stitch about an eighth less than the fold if that makes sense. So for you, 3 eighths of an inch away from the folded length, the folded hem, and for me, I'm stitching 7 eighths. And the stitch length is two and a half straight stitch. So we've got these all stitched up. Go take your iron and give them a nice press. At this stage, you can add some bar tacks to your pockets if you want. It's totally optional, so I did. And I just stitched across this side seam and I started at where the edge of this pocket and the side seam meet and then I went down and did my second bar tack where this stitching line meets the side seam so you can see kind of the positioned. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it and based it off of the picture in the instructions. But since you, I've shown you how to do bar tacks, I'm not going to show that part but I just wanted to show you that this is an optional um, detail and you can only do one if you want or none. But next, we're gonna move on to the tabs. So here is a set and then I have another set which I've pinned together and you're going to pin them together right sides facing each other. So for this one, I've drawn in the seam allowance which is 5 eighths of an inch and I did this because I want to make sure that I have um, my pivot points in place and then just to make sure that they're even so that's why I have this line drawn across but I'm going to stitch from the top pivot down pivot here at the point pivot back up and stitch that way um, this just makes sure that when I'm stitching it together it's nice and even so go ahead pin your tabs right sides together go ahead and draw in the stitching lines if you want you don't have to you can just use your um, presser foot and your seam allowance guide to guide you if you want. So I'll take it to the machine here and we'll start. I can start since I have my guides in place just like that. I've stitched down to my first pivot point and this is where we're going to have the needle down into the fabric. We're going to lift the presser foot up and then pivot the fabric how we need it to go. Stitch to the next pivot point. And when you get close to the pivot point, you want to stop using the foot pedal and just use your hand wheel to make sure you absolutely get the mark. You probably need to go one more. Let's see. So go all the way to the end. So we back tacked when we started and we're gonna back tack when we finished. Now we have this lovely little thing and we're going to need to trim it before we turn it inside out. Once we have it stitched up, the next thing we're going to do is trim it and you're going to trim it about a quarter inch away from the stitched edge and I'm using my little ginger scissors which are great for detailed cutting so let's start I'm probably a little bit less than a quarter inch but 
Instructions say a quarter inch. That's what we're gonna do. I'll try to. And then when you get to the points, I like to come in really close and kind of snip the edge off. Just be careful, don't go, of course, through the stitching. But this just helps make the points be a little bit more, I don't know, pointier, if you will. And you could kind of even just snip even more as you get closer to those points. Because um, it turns, like I said, it's, it keeps the shape better. Um, so I have this set, this tube turner set, and I'll link it below. But this helps me turn like spaghetti scrap, sp sp spaghetti scraps, spaghetti straps, and just tubes and things like this. So you get a bigger tube and then you put your object or your tube over it or tab or whatever it is. Then you get one of the other little tubes and you stick it through, stick it in, I say. Basically you're turning it inside out and voila. And then you can kind of even use this to poke out your shape, but a bamboo or a point turner, plastic or bamboo will be fine, works just as well. If you don't have anything like this, you can use something like a chopstick. Just don't use your scissors because you'll probably poke a hole through your tab and that would not be fun. So we're just gonna shape it and get those little points out as best we can. Trying to make it even. All right. So now we basically have our tab and I'm gonna go ahead and just press it flat and then we'll take it to the machine and top stitch. But this is what it looks like when everything's said and done. When it's top stitched, stitched onto the pant and your button is on there. So let's go press it and then top stitch it. So for the top stitching, much like we've been doing, we're going to start by going down, pivoting, going to the point, pivoting, going to the side, pivoting, going back up, and it's all going to be, um, I think it, they said about an eighth of an inch or something, but we're using the inside of my foot, again, the presser foot, to start the first stitch. So here we have the first rows of top stitching. We're gonna go back and use the outside edge of the presser foot and go along that first top stitching line that we did. So that's going to be about a quarter inch away from the first line of top stitching. Okay, we have this done, although this looks a little wonky. <laughs> that's okay, actually. I'm not going to redo it, and the reason is because the button is going to be sewn over it and it's going to cover it. Otherwise, I'm, I would redo this because it's really not good. Okay. So what you're going to do is to prepare your hem for the tab is you've got your hem. It's not folded up yet. The instructions say to fold it up an inch. So I've done that and mine will look a little bit different probably from yours because I added some additional length on my hem because I wanted um, it to look the way that it does basically. So now that mine is rolled up an inch, you're going to take it to the machine and you're going to, there's two sides you need to do that stitch in the ditch to. It's the, it's on the seams, the inseam and the side seam. So here we're on the inseam. And you're going to place your hem, this is your hem, and make sure that the seams lines are nice and lined up and you're going to basically just stitch right on that seam line and so that indentation that line on your stitch plate will be your guide you're just going to stitch 
right on top of that seam line, which is stitching effectively in the ditch. And by using a coordinating color, you really will not see this stitching. You shouldn't. Basically. And you'll do it on both sides of the pants. So like I said, the inseam and the side seam. So for the top, you've got your finished top stitch tab. I would actually pink slightly the edge of the tab or, or serge it, but don't like just serge the edge, don't cut any off, just to prevent this from fraying. Um, and then the instructions say fold it in half. Now when I originally did this, I folded it in half so that the tip came to the edge. But what I would do is just fold it in half such that it comes to there. Does that make sense? It, do, it comes, it doesn't go all the way up to the apex of the tab or the corner. It goes straight line to like that. Does that make sense? Because when you go and you stitch it on, here's the inside, you stitch it this way. And if you, you want to give that extra length so that this tab covers it. You'll see what I mean. Sometimes I feel like I don't explain things well. So you're going to attach it to the side with the pocket, okay? So the best way I've found to do this, again, you folded it like that, right? Is you're going to just go and you're going to place it so that the edge of your hem, your folded up hem, sits nicely and then you make sure that the point is right there on, it's going to meet the end of your pocket. It should. Now I did, I first did mine a little bit different. Like I said, I didn't, I folded it like tip to the end. So mine doesn't quite meet that, but I'm showing you what I think is the right way and the better way. But anyway, You're going to do that. You're going to make sure that the point of the tab is on the seam and you can go ahead and that point you want to pin. Pin the bottom into place. Okay. So then when you go to the machine, you're just going to stitch right along this edge about an eighth of a way inch away from the raw edge just like that that's what you're going to do and then you're going to come back and you're going to stitch your button on your button plays something like that or however you want it really this is your pair of pants. So you just hand stitch that button in and you're going to hand stitch the button in through all these layers. So it's going to be the top layer, then the pant short layer, and then you're going to go through the underside of the tab. And that's all you have to do. And you're basically done. So if you've made these shorts, please tag me on your Instagram. If you use Instagram, I would love to see them. Um, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead, check me out. I do post a lot there um, on things that you don't see on YouTube because not everything I sew makes it on YouTube just because I don't have time to film everything that I do. But I do document more on Instagram, so be sure to check me out there at SoCal underscore Socialite. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.
I have finished sewing and once I finished completed the circle, I back tack. I can take the pins out now. Um, okay, so I will say though with this at this step you can if you want um, just straight off the bat surge it. I don't do that. I never just first surge. That's just my preference. If you do, you'll want to disengage the blade on your serger. Just FYI. And then once you've finished stitching, you'll see here that you've got your waistband on. And yes, it's going to be quite puckery and really gathered, but that, don't fret, is totally normal. And when you put it on, those gathers will stretch out and it will be more flat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go to my serger and serge off this seam. And then we're going to be on to hemming the shorts. Before we go and start the hem of the pants or the shorts, um, I want to just tell you that top stitching this is optional and I think I'm going to do that because it does help keep the bottom and the bottom of the elastic waistband tucked under and um, below the waistline. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my presser foot and there is a groove under that line and I'm gonna just line it up with the waistline itself. If you have an edge stitch foot, that's even better. I like to use my edge stitch foot for this, but not everyone has that, so I'm just gonna do it this way. Let's see if I could zoom in. And then I'm going to move my needle over, I think three places. And I am going to zigzag this. I'm going to zigzag it at 0.5, stitch length, two and a half. And I am going to kind of stretch as I go so that it's smooth and I'm not um, stitching down tiny pleats or gathers because we don't really want that. just guiding that middle groove of the presser foot right along the seam. And you can use this, your right hand, to constantly be feeling to make sure that the, the seam allowance is pressed under going that way towards the bottom of the pant and also using that hand to kind of pull taut the pant. 